everyone, thanks for joining today. Today I am making a non-traditional black forest cake. So I'm starting with a chocolate cake that is about five inches and I am creating a American buttercream dam. So I'm using this dam for stability because I am using a whipped cream filling. And so in goes that whipped cream filling, which is has been stabilized with gelatin to help it set nice and um, firm in the fridge. And then I'm gonna make a bit of a well, I'm gonna add a roasted cherry jam. For this roasted cherry jam, I just coated my berries or my cherries in sugar, roasted them in the oven for about half an hour until the juices started to release and set. I then, this is because it's a little bit tall, I added a secondary dam to make sure it didn't all kind of come flowing out of the cake, added another layer of whipped cream for extra indulgence, and then topped my final cake layer on top. I did a bit of pressure on top just to kind of help it set together. And then I wanted to make sure, just for extra, again, stability, I smoothed out my sides to make sure that that cherry jam and whipped cream were going to stay in the cake. This was a bit softer than I expected it to be. So after smoothing out um, with a really rough smoothing here, I'm going to put it in the fridge for at least 10 minutes to really make sure that buttercream sets and that whipped cream sets. So that way I can be successful in my next steps of the cake. If you find that you're making a cake and it's not setting as what you think it should be or it's a little bit loose, you know, a five to 10 minute wait in the fridge or in the freezer can really help to stabilize your cake. So don't be afraid to take a little break, pop this cake in the fridge or freezer, and then bring it back out once it's set. So here it is set. I'm now gonna go for a crumb coat. So my cakes were soaked with a cherry liqueur, which well, I used um, vodka, cherries, and sugar. And I also trimmed the outside of my cake. So my cakes have lots of crumbs. And so this crumb coat is very important since I want to have a nice clean buttercream on the outside. And so with the crumb coat, I'm not going for perfect. I am just going for covered. I want to make sure that I have no exposed cake on the side or very little exposed cake on the side. So that way, when I do my final coat, I have a crumb free and really beautiful and smooth finish. As I mentioned, you don't have to go for perfect for a crumb coat. You do, however, need to go for even. If you don't have an even crumb coat, having an even outer layer or an even finish is going to be just that much harder. One way to have an even cake is to understand where your faults are. So I know that I always under frost the top of my cake. So right now I'm taking the time to really try to build up those what I call them corners. Um, try to build up those corners to make sure that I have enough buttercream that is actually even all the way down. The next thing I do is I like to um, get eye level with my cake and then watch the left side of my cake as I turn the turnstile. This is going to help me pinpoint if areas are not how they should be. So if you watch the left side of my cake as I turn, you'll notice that the um, this side right here has a bit of a belly. So it's not necessarily bad, it's just a little less straight than I want it. So as I notice that, I can then use this phase to adjust my cake and straighten it out. Because my cake has set in the fridge and is fairly firm and, and chilled, I can put some light pressure on whatever side I need to to adjust that cake, which you'll see me doing in a bit here. Now having an uneven cake would not be a make or break moment. So you can see I'm putting some light pressure here to kind of straighten that belly out. Um, this would not be life or death. This would not really, um, having this belly wouldn't really have any structural issues with my cake. It just makes it less aesthetically pleasing. And so I'm taking the time to straighten it out because one, it's not for me. And two, I wanna make sure that everything is nice and even as I can get it. So now that I've put some light pressure, I'm gonna do one more turn, watch that left side of the cake to see if I have any more um, gaps or um, bellies um, or wobbliness, which is hard to see here because my cake is not centered on my turn style. So it definitely comes toward the camera. Um, so it's harder for you guys to see. But I'm happy with this, into the fridge it goes for 20 minutes or so. Because this cake is not for me, I'm going to make it a little more pretty, so I'm going to transfer it to a um, greaseproof cake board that is gold to kind of match with the yellow that has on the flowers. I'm going to center it and then use my bench scraper and my um, palette knife to just put some light pressure on the top to secure this to the cake. For extra security, I'm going to pipe a ring of buttercream on the bottom, I mean an American buttercream, and then smooth out that seam. The name of the game of cake decorating really is stability. So if you don't think your cake is going to hold to the board, pop it in the fridge for at least five minutes, maybe 10, to make sure that that cake holds. I felt confident in my 
in my setup, so I was gonna go ahead and do my final coat. So again, my final coat is just more American buttercream, and I'm gonna smush this around the sides until I have a nice even layer. And if you notice just before right now, I did scrape off my palette knife. So with a final coat, you want everything to be perfect. You don't want to start with a dirty palette knife. So definitely take the time to wipe off your tools, wipe off your board if you need to, and you know, have it have everything go as smooth as possible while having everything just be nice and clean. So earlier I mentioned I'm making a non-traditional black forest, and really the non-traditional comes in right here with this American buttercream. So typically black forest is just cherries, chocolate, and cream. So I'm using American buttercream for stability and for decoration. I also opted for a cherry liqueur versus kirsch, which kirsch is typically um, a bitter alcoholic um, cherry flavor, and I chose a sweet one. Um, so that's really where the non-traditional part comes in. I felt confident in my buttercream layer, so now it's time to smooth it out. And so I like to use a bench scraper. So for me, a bench scraper is a really great 90 degree um, surface that I can use to straighten out my buttercream layer and make it all nice and smooth. And then I go back and fill in any holes with extra buttercream. So as you can see, I keep my bench, um, my bench scraper um, parallel to the cake, directly up and down. And then I leave my right hand straight and I use my left hand to turn the turnstile. This again, make sure that I'm not putting uneven pressure anywhere and that I'm gonna have a nice and smooth cake. And if you see any big hole like this one, again, just put some more buttercream in it and um, go back and smooth it out. Do keep in mind that any frosting that you have to whip on high speeds for a long period of time, it's gonna have air bubbles. So these air bubbles are nothing to be concerned about. This is totally normal in cake making. Um, it just means that you have to um, Sometimes do a little more smoothing just to get everything nice and even, or you can also switch to a paddle attachment and whip your, or not even whip, but just stir your buttercream for 10 minutes on really, really low. Because I decorate my cakes cold, my buttercream started to set. And so when it sets, it's harder to kind of fill the holes without pulling the frosting off the cake by accident. So I chose, I chose to switch to a warm bench knife. So I just boil some water, put it in a bowl, pop my bench knife, as you can see, in the hot water, wipe it off, there was no moisture, and then smooth out my cake. This is just actually slightly melting the outer layer of frosting to make sure the holes are nice and filled. Again, the goal with this technique isn't to actually pull off frosting, just to slightly melt it enough to cover all the holes and get a smooth finish. I use the same technique to kind of smooth off my edges on the top of the cake, as you, as you can see my cake is now much more level and less craggly. I then wanna make sure that my cake looks really nice, so I'm gonna pipe a shell border using the same green um, that I use for my flower petals, so that way it all kind of ties together nice with the color scheme. So you want to find what you call the back of your cake, start there, and by the time I get to here, which is the front of the cake, my shells look nice and even. So shell pattern is just hold your hand at 45 degree angle, um, pipe and push out buttercream, and then when you want to stop, um, you want to stop pushing out pressure and then move your tip away. That's going to give you a nice shell. And then I'm going to attach my decoration, which are some buttercream poinsettias. These buttercream poinsettias are things that I made when I, my, my cake was chilling, so I wasn't really wasting any time, which is really nice. And so I'm just going to attach them with some yellow buttercream. You're not going to see the back of these poinsettias, so whatever buttercream you have left over is perfectly fine. If you are concerned, then I would have gone with either white or green, since um, it's a green, the green leaves, and then white would have matched the cake. Or if you are, again, really concerned, um, you can make it look more wreath-like. And you'll see toward the end here, I pipe some stars, some green stars, um, just to make it look more like a wreath. It's important to note that my poinsettias have been in the freezer for at least half an hour. So as you can see, they pull off nicely from the parchment and are nice and firm. So I can use gentle pressure to push them onto my cake without them snapping or melting or um, having a lot of breakage. So some of my tips did break off of the leaves, but it just makes the leaf look more natural. So I was okay with that. Do keep in mind that these buttercream flowers will not last forever. So definitely make sure that you keep them cold um, or pop them back in the fridge or freezer if they start to get a little bit wilty. So with this last flower, I had to do a little bit of maneuvering, so just a bit of adjusting. And then to clean up my edges, I used a metal toothpick or a metal flooding pick, and I just kind of pushed things around to make sure it was all nice and set. And then any broken pieces, I then removed them from the cake so it was nice and pretty and even. My cake was looking good, so I added my last poinsettia here to the front of the cake just to make it look a little nicer. Um, have, again, some extra bling, extra decoration. Just, you know, again, gentle pressure, don't really force it, give it a turn, see how it looks. And I found there's a bunch of white space on top of my cake. Unfortunately, you guys can't see it because my camera's too low, 
Um, but you can see here, I'm piping some green stars just to make it look more like a fuller wreath. Like I had um, done a whole wreath. So you could easily um, not have these gaps by piping a green border first or not have these gaps by making small and large flowers to fill those gaps. Um, or again, you can do what I'm doing and just using the extra buttercream you have to pipe out um, those white places. So here's my finished look of the cake from the top, and then I'm going to have some pictures from the side. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope this inspires you to make your own poinsettia cake. If you do, definitely tag me at Baking in Broadway. Again, thanks so much for hanging out with me, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.